Pop stars one night, footy games the next. There's an entertainment revolution going on around the world and Australia is being left in the bleachers. It's our stadiums. They're tired and old. Some of the biggest names in showbiz and sport fear we're becoming a global laughing stock. Big stadiums, big acts, big games. Sure, we've got plenty of stadiums. Taylor Swift played seven nights across Melbourne and Sydney. But the debate over building newer and better stadiums is raging in states across the eastern seaboard. Sport and entertainment has collided to become one of the biggest things in the world and we're still looking at it like it was the old days of the AFL, the NRL and the cricket. Massive. It's the new world, mate. You know, we've got to get out of the past and get into the new world. Melbourne proudly boasts the MCG, Melbourne Park and Docklands. But it's not enough, says sport and entertainment guru Eddie Maguire. I'd like to see the MCG, the Southern Stand, the Shane Warne Stand, be extended over towards the railway area, make it world class and get that capacity back up to over 120,000. That gets the big events to Melbourne. Sydney relies on the ageing Olympic Stadium and the new Allianz. But Bulldogs general manager and rugby league power broker Phil Gould wants more. I think Sydney deserves a stadium with a roof. Yeah, not just for rugby league, but for all other sorts of entertainment that our city deserves. And what about Brisbane? Planning to host an Olympic Games without building a new stadium. Dressing up old ones instead. I'm very worried about the Games because I think when you're a smaller city like Brisbane, the Games define you forever. Paris and LA and London won't be defined by the Olympics because they've got a million things happening. Meanwhile, around the world, they're building fields of dreams. It's the future, and if you're not part of the future, then you're part of the past, and it goes backwards very quickly. State-of-the-art stuff. Playing fields which host a match one day before folding away and allowing concerts there the next night. The big international stadiums now all have roofs and the new innovations is the floors. You could have Taylor Swift on a Wednesday, Collingwood Carlton on a Saturday, a cricket match on the Sunday and rinse and repeat. A case in point is Aussie Ange Postacoglu's Tottenham Hotspur Club in the UK Premier League. Based in North London, it opened at a cost of two billion Australian dollars five years ago, a whiz-bang new stadium with a retractable floor. Since then, match day revenue soared from 85 million Aussie dollars a year to a staggering 240 million. Plus, it hosts superstar concerts featuring stars like Beyonce and Lady Gaga to make even more. It's happening everywhere at the famous Bernabeu in Madrid and right across North America. Look at the facilities they're building on the west coast of America. Why? Because they want to eat our lunch. But if we're still thinking about building grandstands like we did back in the day, then this is going to go past us at a thousand miles an hour. Any grandstand that was built before Wi-Fi and even now maybe even AI may as well be Noah's Ark. So it begs the question, where does that leave our ageing and historic suburban grounds? In Melbourne, the likes of Waverley are long gone, but some Sydney NRL teams are clinging on to them. So Gus, here we are out the back of Belmore, and these are the corporate suites. This is it. Uh, they've done this up nicely for what it is. We can probably seat 40 or 50 people here on game day yeah. and treat them nicely. Uh, you compare that with the Broncos or the Roosters and those sort of people who can seat 3,000 for a meal in a lovely environment prior to the game. Hard to compete 3,000 well, against 50. You can't. They're making 100 times the money every time they, uh, they have a home game compared to us. If we have games here at, uh, at Belmore, it's just commercially impossible. Phil Gus Gould loves his club's traditional home, Belmore Sports Ground, but admits it's not the future for playing anyway. We're going to spend $50 million on a centre of excellence here that's going to house men's and women's football into the future. This will always be the spiritual home of the Bulldogs. Whether it's Leichhardt Oval or Jubilee or Belmore Oval and all these lovely little boutique stands that we love, every time they have a home game at their ground, they probably lose money. The problem across the nation, there's no political will anywhere to fund stadiums. We're in the middle of a cost of living crisis, a housing crisis, 
most voters across the country, uh, but particularly in states like New South Wales, would rather governments focus on, those, on, on that crisis, getting people into homes and not into stadiums. Kos Samaras is one of Australia's most respected pollsters. He says it's all in the numbers, particularly so in Queensland, where the long-term Labor government faces an election later this year. We've got to remember that we are living through a cost of living crisis for a lot of Australians. They're going to take years to recover from, 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 this, from, from the, uh, the impact of this. So we could be still having this conversation at least another five years. Brisbane-based Robert Craddock is one of the nation's top sports writers and has covered countless Olympic and Commonwealth Games. It's your signature venue of the Olympics, you know, your athletic stadium, you know, it has to look good. A swimming pool is a swimming pool. A basketball court's a basketball court, but the athletics venue has to sparkle and I don't believe QSAC works. The lack of Olympic plans has left observers in southern states stunned. The problem is this, we're going to come off Paris, which has got the most beautiful venues that you could possibly have. You know, the Palace of Versailles in front of the Eiffel Tower. Then we'll go to uh, Los Angeles, where all the facilities are already built. And they're not thinking about building stadiums, they're thinking about putting on the biggest show on earth, because that's what LA's about. So what's the brand for Queensland? What, paint the seats at the Gabba? Or get the showgrounds going again? We'll look like Hicksville. I can't believe Australia is going to host an Olympics that's going to be on show to the rest of the world, where we don't want to show ourselves in a professional light. You know, we can't do that. It's not Brisbane's problem, it's Australia's problem. We've got eight years to be ready, so we'll get there, I hope.